I think FYYP between Japan and China is ping pong because Japan and China compete each other in some big tournament. 在乒乓球啊、呃羽毛球这些就是技巧性方面的体育赛事上，基本都是中国大比分领先于其他国家。日本动画方面，我觉得日本就动漫产业方面可能要领先于其他的国家，所以他们更愿意玩自己的游戏。Zoro and Diamond and that kind of weird decks. 针对中快速卡组，我个人。不喜欢用控制卡组去针对中快速卡组，因为你就是需要解他的那张牌没有到到手里的话，你可能会被打会被打崩。It is important to be Chinese player because the years kind of weird decks. We don't want want to let them win. 所以说我喜欢用快速卡组来去打来去针对中快速卡组，所以说我这是也是给国服一个就是。玩家们提供一个思路，去怎么样去针对这样一个毒瘤职业。I will destroy Diamond because my lineup is better. Diamond versus No. Welcome back, everybody, to Harrison World Championships. We are going to see Japan versus China, Kuno versus Diamond. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm here with Froden and Amas to talk about this match. Froden, don't look at me. I'm a loser. <laughs> you did really well, man. Uh, you did really well. Oh man. The only thing that I'll say about that series before we move on, rightfully to the third quarter final, is I really thought that he would pick Priest in that scenario. That's why I picked the Rogue. I uh, picked Rogue to try to kill Priest because I think everyone would bring Priest. And I was like mostly right. I really wanted to face you in the finals. <laughs> so you have Maybe an easy win. Time. So you have oh. an easy win, I'm on, Like how it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, you know, um, I'm doing all right outside of that. Uh, today has been a wonderful set of games. I've been highly entertained from all the player strategies to watching Elki and Daniel toss backwards, uh, and it, it's been a really good ride so far. It was a great tournament so far. And Amas, how are you doing? You you won versus Brian. Yeah. I mean, so far the BlizzCon, uh, Hearthstone. Tournament has been amazing. It's been a lot of variety. People who want to see competitive games can see that. There's also a lot of variety games as well. But now it's business time, right? We have to see which two people are going to join Tice and Oskaka in the semifinals. Absolutely. And before we even start talking about those players, who are your picks? Do you think uh, Kuno is going to take it? Well, uh, you know, one thing that I, I think people really underestimate is just the power of uh, an aggressive lineup. And I think Dai Meng has exactly a kind of lineup that will really surprise and punish people who aren't anticipating things like Mech Shaman to come out. He is, also has a Secrets Paladin. He also has an aggressive Hunter. And these naturally are much faster than what uh, Kano is playing. He's, you know, he has Druid, mid-range Druid, and he mid has mid-range paladin. Mid paladin. And those are slower decks. They might get caught off guard by how fast Dai Meng is. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, the strength of a mid-range deck is that you know you, you sacrifice the first few turns and then you know your middle of turns are just amazing with all those uh, you know Savannah high mains perhaps uh, but then you know you kind of drag the layoff but the aggressive deck just doesn't give enough time for mid-range decks to develop to even turn four to be honest so I do give the edge to Diamond here as well well, I would agree uh, with you guys on paper, but on the other hand, uh, from Kuno, uh, he is bringing his Paladin. This is his favorite class, his favorite deck, and he really believes yep. in it. He thinks that it's really hard to counter, so he doesn't really have a bad matchup. He feels like he can win versus everything with his Paladin. Right. That's right. I think Justice if you look at what Kuno has done so far, he's defied many odds. And so even though he might come in here on paper as a player that's disadvantaged, maybe in his, his opinion, he might even be favored, depends on how he sees the matchups. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it's so great to see a Japanese player here at World Championships where we just launched Hearthstone in Japan just a month ago. Yeah, that's right. Now Japan can have their own server, so to speak, and have uh, their own community continue to be built up. And Kano was mentioning that it's small, but they're very passionate and they know each other very well, and they're all very inclusive. So it's not just Kuno playing for his country, but it feels like all of the J Japanese community is behind him as well. Absolutely. And uh, Daimang on the other side, uh, Amas, what do we know about him? Well, uh, I just think he's uh, one of the best players in the um, in, in the lower bracket. I mean, the second uh, bracket because I mean, uh, Tice and Oskaka are my picks. But uh, Daiming, I think, uh, yeah, he, he just has a great lineup. He knows uh, his mechanics a lot. And uh, even though we see here it's a Paladin mirror matchup, uh, both Paladin decks are actually quite different. Uh, Daiming is gonna 
is utilizing the Secrets Paladin, while Kuno is actually using the more mid-range Paladin. We used to see him before Mysterious Challenger was introduced. Job's and uh, in this matchup, I really favor Diamond. Well All right, so game number one is ready. The players are starting right now. Secret Paladin versus the mid-range Paladin. Yeah. Early curve is so important for Paladin because of how the way things sequence, um, like Divine Shields on mini bots, and whoever gets the first muster to pop that shield gets a huge advantage on board. So that's why you want to make sure you plan out your curve very aggressively. Diamond can use not just the, um, the mini bot to trade, but he also has Noyotron to hide behind. That's why he can make such an aggressive point play. And Diamond is utilizing those Enorotrons because he has a very secret tech in his uh, deck, which is a Blood Knight, which is extra, oh, yeah. extra good. I mean, imagine the Blood wow. Knight game popped onto this board right now. Oh. Uh, but Kneno knows better than that. He's just going to take the uh, Divine Shield trade here. So and Diamond even, gets a better, good trade here. Even without the trade, I think Blood Knight would be a super good card here. But uh, there is the best free drop for Diamond. That's Master for Battle. And with that, he will be able to... Oh, actually, you're almost clear. Yeah, it seems like the Chinese community really enjoys these heavy tech in preparation mm. for what you expect to be really dominant. So they're willing to play Black Knight, they're willing to play Blood Knight and Mind Control Tech. Those are some cards you might see much more commonly in the Asian server, or Chinese server rather, than compared to West Metal. It's actually amazing that the metagames differ so much mm -hmm. uh, based on the server and what are the preferences of the players. But here, turn four. Yeah, uh, Diamond did choose to sacrifice the Enorachan just to pop that Divine Shield, which gives a very, very clear signal that this might be a noble sacrifice. So Kuno, if he just wants to... Oh, he just goes ahead and uh, tra uh, trades it off and establishes Shredder. So yeah, Diamond has a pretty good firm control of the board if he can actually, you know, draw something pretty good. So, Frona, what do you think about this matchup overall? Who has an advantage? Is it Midridge Paladin or is it Secret Paladin? Well, both of them technically have a mid-range approach to it where you want early game curve minions until your late game and you just want to make sure the draws and the plays line up. However, I do tend to favor the Secrets Paladin because it is the one that can get away by being aggressive. Mm. Because the way Secrets work, they don't activate on your turn, so a lot of times you need your opponent to attack into your minions, so you have no choice but to be aggressive and hit the face. That often causes the opponent Paladin to be in a disadvantage because then they have to really pick into bad trades and get Secrets and then the vent goes off. It gets pretty nasty pretty quickly. Uh, I have to agree. But on the other hand, if you do draw those secrets, if you don't have the drops on every turn, you might, you might fall behind. It's true. Uh, also, if you go card by card, Midrange Paladin has the tools to come back, like uh, lay on hands. And uh, maybe if, you are, if you're not pressure enough at some point, you will just run out of uh, resources. There was something that I believe uh, the team Archon did mention to me one time, I think it was Firebass specifically, that he feels like the mid-range Paladin is sort of like a, a different version of Druid, to some people maybe even better. And the reason why is because it's so early game curve dependent, um, but because uh, you can get that curve, you can beat almost anything, just how Druid's very versatile against a lot of things as well. Yeah, that's true. And of course, uh, we just can't forget that Mysterious Challenger being that one swing uh, turn that, you know, there's not a single Paladin card can just, you know, deal with the Mysterious Challenger one for one, right? So um, that, that's why we uh, do favor the Secrets Paladin a little bit more. But uh, it seems like the Diamond... Oh, oh wow. wow! Interesting, a second <laughs> Murloc Knight. Both can be dealt with in Consecration, which is pretty much the only play available for Diamond this turn, unless he picks up the Mysterious Challenger on there turn six, go. That's right exactly on time. what you want to see. Who am I? None of your business. Well, it's a lot of no's business at this point, because he has to deal with uh, the series challenger that has two additional targets for revenge, making clearing very difficult unless he picked up Consecration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there is no Consecration for now, but Avenge, Noble Sacrifice, Redemption, Repentance, possibly. Well, one Repentance was shown. Yeah, so we think it's actually the four secrets that are not Repentance, so there's a competitive spirit thrown there in the mix as well. Uh, yeah, Kuno, of course, goes ahead and uh, trades first. Hopefully, this Avenge hits the Mysterious Challenger so that the Aldo Peace Keeper can effectively reduce two extra attack. One out of three, and it oh, lands yeah, onto go. the Mysterious Challenger. That's really big. <laughs> yeah, the Aldo Peace Keeper will be super good. Uh, Redemption, obviously, bringing back the 2-1 to the game. That was so big because now Kano can fight back at a reasonable pace and not feel pressured to uh, just basically be a threat of dying. Because if, if your opponent spreads damage, oh, wow. 
Oh, two repentance. There is two yeah. repentance. So there is My no competitive spirit in the list, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, well, it, it's not very commonly seen, mm -hmm. but two repentance is something that you can tack in if you anticipate you know, the Ancient of Wars and a lot of those types of cards. It's really hard to play around the first one. Uh, you will mostly expect it after Mysterious Challenger, sure. but you will never expect the second one. And um, that Consecration just dealt 10 damage across Man. the board. And, it's a uh, lot. Yeah, Diamond has informed control of the board. Kuno, on the other hand, doesn't seem like he can play a lot of cards. Well, he does have Sylvanas, which would complicate a lot of uh, combat math for Diamond. Most likely, it would just end up him feeling like his opponent has to trade, so he'll attack very aggressively. Mm -hmm. But it's not over yet, especially because Diamond didn't take that turn to develop Dr. Boom. Yeah. True. On the other hand, he still has a board that is threatening and he's Let dealt with. Think. And Kuno doesn't have the way to deal with this board right now. Juggler will provide him with maybe one knife. So he still needs to uh, find no a board here. Something like Master for Battle. Equally, knife Juggler, Master for Battle Reporting will be enough to clear the board. Yeah, that's right. Putting everything to those low health minions is very good for Knife Juggler, but does he have enough time? Because a lot of times with Dr. Boom and inevitably with Mysterious Challenger drawing more cards, you're more likely to hit Tyrion. This is going to be very hard for Kuno to stop the pressure. And that's not a Consecration of the second Murloc Knight. So is there anything he can do here? Yeah, Come. maybe there is some interesting creative play you can do with Equality and perhaps trading Sylvanas. Uh, knife Juggler, you know, throwing one knife. Uh, but it's gonna be uh, pretty difficult here. Yeah, the key is that he has to just not oh, die wonder. next turn, so that's de entirely dependent on stealing Dr. Boom right. away from the other side of the field. Well, I mean, the safe play would be to, you know, kill the Dr. Boom with equality of the Sylvanas. Sure. Yeah. And then steal one of the minions and maybe yeah. kill one more with the knife uh, from the well, juggler. Well, obviously but you want to steal the Boom bar because it's like a trading two for one, right? That's it true. just kills, uh, you know, one, 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 and then Zephyrado kills another one, one. And yep. he's looking at the Silver, versus so some potential healing, maybe if he stabilizes uh, you can get lay on hands. There is also Avenge waiting on the other end of this. And oh. whatever it lands on could also be Whoa, disastrous. Whoa, that's actually oh. really good. Yeah, that yeah. is really good. That sets up a much better trade. Getting the boom, and he's stealing the bomb. So four damage and coming six with the Cock Hammer. That's really the perfect scenario that Kano is looking forward to get back in the game. And of course, Diamond here is just going to swarm the board again. And uh, Palance, outside of Consecration, doesn't really have a great way of dealing one damage after the Snipe Dribble dies. Well, the thing uh, is, this is the moment to trade, and if uh, Kuno picks up uh, Lay on Hands, that's actually a lot of heal that he can get. Uh, that's like, true. Get. Yeah, that'd be huge, considering that he can restore enough life to stay alive and probably develop things on the next turn, considering that there's not much power on Diamond's board. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see where the Boomba goes. The bomb kills the Mistress okay. Challenger. That's really disappointing for Diamond. I think he really wanted to deal with Murloc Knight, but uh, in, in, any way, in any way, he's just going to still go very aggressive because he needs to get his opponent's health very quickly down to zero because one Tyrion could completely swing this game around. Yeah, Tyrion will be super powerful, really hard to get through, and then Diamond will need something like an Iron Begal, maybe, if he even plays it. Some secret paladins do play a silence. Um, you know, and almost any tech is viable if you really think about it. However, one thing is that these guys have been playing for about a week now, so almost all the cards are known to their opponents in terms of deck lists. Now, I like Diamond's attack here. It basically uh -huh. sets up lethal uh, because there is seven health of Kuno. And now, um, yeah, Kuno really needs to fish for a charge Murloc. Yeah, there is no oh. top Murlocs. True Sword Champion will keep him alive yeah. just barely. But almost any source of damage here for Diamond is enough. Yeah, that's six points of damage incoming, so True Silver lethal. will be fine. No, not I'm quite. Sure is, uh, not helping him here, but it's still a great minion to play. And, you know, just pressuring, pressuring Kuno, putting him in a situation where he can't come back. He needs a taunt. That's it. He's, he's just run out of time. He can't kill off the, the flood of minions too much. He's just dead to a weapon hit. He needs some kind of taunt. And that's not quite it, but of course, there's always the, the happy Doomsayer. birthday of Doomsayer. Doomsayer. It, it is a 1 in, what, 75 chance, basically? Or 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very unlikely. Yeah. For the oh, there's the charger that he was looking for last turn. A bit too light. Explosive Sheep also might be good. That's, yeah, that's right. So Explosive Sheep, oh, Unstable Ghoul then. Unstable Ghoul well. could be work, uh, could <laughs> actually keep it out. So there's a few outs here. So or because Kuna. of Unstable Ghoul, you want to hit the Shredder with your one health creatures and perhaps save the 3-3. Three, three. That's like really technical. Three. Two arms, man! Sure. Yeah. I oh, mean, this, this, this also makes sense, too. And what is it? No. No, not, really. not the Darnassus Aspirin. So Kuno drops game one. Dai Meng from China strikes first blood. 
Yeah, Secrets Pally does take a game off the mid range uh, Pally. Traditionally does struggle against Mech Shaman with how fast it accelerates and how you want to ramp early game. Uh, that's one of the key matchups that I think Kano will want to avoid going from this point forward. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think Kuno is just going to save his drift for the last game, perhaps, mm -hmm. and just get some wins under his belt, you know, get some confidence back, and then yep. just go on from there. And then on the flip side, too, the same thing with that Warlock, which can be susceptible to Hunter. You're going to want that to probably hit the Mech Shaman because you can disarm their early board very easily with trades. Implosion just single-handedly sometimes blows Mech Shaman out of the water. Uh, these types of matchups, you're going to definitely bet that Kuno is going to try to swap for him. <laughs> Absolutely. For me, an amazing thing is that for, uh, for Diamond, he's coming here from China, and he's fighting for some more time to play Hearthstone because he has a deal with his, ha his family to actually, if he is successful, he will be able to continue. Yeah, that's right. You know, we've got a chance to talk to Daimeng um, a couple times, and one of the things that really stuck out to me the most was describing how he doesn't necessarily come from a, a very you know, fluent background uh, where he was able to like afford any kind of gaming setup he wants. He was just playing uh, you know, at local internet PCs just so that way he can try to get some Hearthstone time. He doesn't have his own tablet, really doesn't have like a strong laptop or anything. Well, he's determined. That's what we can say about yeah, that. That's right. Yeah. Absol absolutely. Uh, we actually sat down with the players and, and talked to them a bit. So let's hear their thoughts. Um. My name is Sato Yuichiro. The ID is Kuno. I'm the ID. 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 ID の由来は、えー、元は、えー、とまあなんかキャラクターの名前ですけど、まあ、今はノーレッジの頭文字を取ったということでしてコミュニティが小さいことで、えーとまあ、トッププレイヤーから中堅仮想までのプレイヤーが、まあ、気軽に関われるということはアドバン情報を伝えるか去年、ブリズコンユーター D2 とは、まあ、たまに話をする感じで、ブリズコンに来るにあたっては、リラックスしろとのアドバイスをいただきました。ブリズコンを勝つにあたって、最大の難関は、まあ、運ですかね。賞金の使い道は、まあ、特には考えてませんけど、パックを買うとかいいかもしれませんね。Kuna is just going to buy more hearts and packs. How cool is that? Well, it looks like he's going to need it sometimes uh, because there's a new adventure on the way. So save up your gold if you haven't heard already. Explorers I'm League. looking forward to it. It's next week. Yeah. Oh my God. It's so it's so fast. And have you seen the yeah. new cards? Have you guys had a chance to well, play a bit? Uh, you know, outside of getting my butt hands to me in challenge zone, I have not had a chance to go look at the cards. Maybe I will though after the series. Well, I'm, I believe that all the cards that are going to be in the set are posted online right now. So okay. You can check out the Hearthstone Facebook Rad. for those images. Will yeah, do. some of the cards that we've seen at the opening ceremony were amazing, where you search for a for a map first, and then you find a map, and then you find a treasure, and change everything to legendary cards. <laughs> it was pretty. It's cool. not just a treasure; it's a golden monkey. It is a golden monkey. All right, guys, game number two is ready. Diamond versus Kuno, Paladin versus Shaman. And you know, he's playing the Mech Shaman. That might be his weakest link. It might be, but when you look at the possibilities that you think that people bring Druid, which is very high, you could just have a lineup where you might be targeting a class like that to take advantage of its weaknesses. Well, I'm just looking at the hand from Diamond, and mm. it's like the perfect 
combination of cards you would want. Just wants that Mech Warper, right? It'd almost be uh, 10 out of 10. For, yeah, and like, now you have double one is. drops uh, for the next turn, which is just insane. And we know that um, outside of Sea of Light, Paladins don't actually have a way Ooh. to deal two damage in turn two. And yeah. you know, we, don't, we don't play Sea of Light. Or I guess there's the Argent Lance as well. So uh, yeah, uh, Kino um, fortunately picks up the Zombie Chow, so it could trade. Yeah, but I mean, you can, can also do 12 right. damage with it if you want. That is... Oh, wow. No, no, no. He's, okay. <laughs> he's okay. not doing that. He's, so he's not too greedy. No, yeah, yeah. He is pretty protection. logical. This does effectively the same as Rockbiter in, because you should be able to attack twice. Paladin okay. without the coin can't really do anything to that except Alder Peacekeeper. Is so. he forced to Alder here? He might be. Yeah, it's it doesn't feel good, but the... Uh, wow, he actually feels oh, strong enough to actually play the Elder Peacekeeper. But that gives Diamond a very nice Power Mace target. That's right. And uh, with the Power Mace, unless Kano spends his entire turn using sh uh, Consecration, then that means he's back in business with making sure he puts the aggression on. So uh, Kano needs to be very careful not to do get too greedy here. Oh, wow. But double Consecration means he can expend the first one, you know, quite liberally and just, you know, clear the board. He can. He can also use the True Silver just to deal with the one two, and then have True Silver for the next turn, where possibly a four drop is being played. Oh yeah, but the but the uh, Power Mace is going to break next turn, uh, buffing it out, out of range, and you're just going to have to like take two hits off the minions with the True Silver. That doesn't sound like a good time. Yeah, so. precisely. And you know, without that mech being in play, Diamond doesn't have a way to buff that Power Mace. Uh, cards like Cog Master are not mechs. They need to have mechs on board for it to have synergy. Yeah, absolutely true. But on the other hand, that is a board that needs to be dealt with. Uh, but there is this juggler with Master for Battle for Kuno. Mm -hmm. Where are the knives gonna land? Just needs one into the Leopard Gnome That's for perfect. him. Okay. That's it. Wow. That was pretty much exactly what he wanted. Yeah, dealing with his two small minions, only with the free free on board. But he is down to 17 already. Well, the good news for him is that Diamond is down to three cards. A Doomhammer comes into the hand. That represents a lot of damage, but he can't lose this this turn since he did overload last turn with the Totem Golem. Would you crackle at all to the face because you have Doomhammer the following turn? Oh, wow. Maybe that's too aggressive because you can't, you can't kill him anyways. Yeah, at the same time, you can always roll a Spell Power Totem to pump oh, it one more dash. No, no. Ah, just wants to hit oh, four. No. It's not that much, but still, that is uh, that is some damage, and then he will be able to play the Doomhammer and deal for it. Yeah, that is two turns. Does he have two turns? Kano will definitely have to clear off the board here. <laughs> and now the race is on. Doesn't even want to take that one extra damage with his uh, hero trading into Steering Totem. I mean, the fact that he's at seven is really huge with Choose Over Champion, wow. by the way. But a second crackle, that could be the direct damage he needs. But then we do have the True Silver Champion healing a tad bit out of range. So if Kano finds a taunt, that might be the thing. But and oh. that's not a taunt. So this means that double attack for the Doomhammer and Crackle should be it. True Silver. He, no, he. Oh, he doesn't oh, have enough for lethal. Does yeah, he? he's actually one mana off lethal right now. One mana off lethal. The True Silver and Consecration. That is a shame. So yeah, nice. or or he would have it. Otherwise, use Knife Juggler to enable it too. Just mm -hmm. just a little bit oh, short. And he's going to have to go for this play, hoping that his opponent doesn't have it, but he's just going to be well, completely overrun the next turn. <laughs> Look at Diamond. He's such a boss. He's just waiting for it. Yeah, this play doesn't oh, actually wait, just kills him off the board. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, he effectively just... Uh, one damage off. Oh, he oh, oh, wait, got oh, it. What? Yeah, that's what oh, I thought. What? Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. He juggles. That's what I thought. All right. <laughs> so, Kudo so is going to take it. 1-1. One, one. Wow. Kudo versus Diamond. Hey, hey, okay, to be yeah, honest, hey, you didn't spot that either. No, I thought, okay, at the very end of that... Okay, I'll take the hit for it. At the very end the of that, there, I thought there was maybe a possibility because of the, the double juggles I was counting, so a very good mm -hmm. job by Kano. Yeah, it happens. Happens. It happens. that's why Kano is sitting there and playing. Yeah, and how how does it here. feel? You're officially a caster now, Moss. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> Well, that was I'll, impressive. That I'll, was I'll impressive. take up on some more math. Like <laughs> and that was actually really no important worries. because I mentioned at the beginning of the match the Shaman can be a weak link in the, in the lineup for, for Diamond. So he lost to Paladin mm -hmm. and he might struggle versus Druid. He might struggle versus um, the last deck, which is the Auroch as well. And uh, well, we'll see. I mean, it's important that he got that Paladin win, but it definitely feels like one of those classes that uh, is still one of the... Like, it could win. It also is not very favored against anything else. Uh, the big things in the question marks are the Druid and the Warlock deck. Yeah, absolutely. Abbas, what do you think he's going to take next? 
Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm still um, stuck in the math kind of thing. I'm, I just think Kuno is going to win series. Don't worry. He the, best, me a lot. the best is to own up to it and then just laugh about it. That's kind of okay. what we do here. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm learning. A bit. We're all having fun here. That's all right, guys. Uh, we saw that with Daimeng, and we have some thoughts from him about uh, some manga characters, actually. So let's hear that. Exactly.我最喜欢两部动漫so he feels like he is a manga character? Well, I mean, a lot of people do when you kind of play a game like Hearthstone. Sometimes the draws are a little too convenient. It makes me feel like it's uh, sometimes like, uh, you know, scripted in some way. It's like, how, how does that game pan out the exact same way? You know, the the mind games into Deathwing type thing, or the, the opposite spectrum of mind games. Yeah, Hearthstone is a game where dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I mean, it depends on oh, who you are. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, they did come true for some people, and uh, they will come <laughs> true for the world champion for sure. That's true. Yeah, that's right. So uh, going into game number three here, an important win that uh, Kano was able to get that mid-range Paladin, which is still on, it, you know, it, it's very, it's, it's still on uncharted waters. Even though mid-range Paladin's been around for so long, people ignore that deck primarily because of how powerful Secrets Paladin is mm -hmm. uh, and how popular it is. So don't forget that mid-range Paladin is still a very capable deck, even though you might not see it as often on ladder. Yeah, with the Murloc Knight specifically, at this moment, Paladin might be one of the strongest classes, and if you play the mid-range Secret or mid-range mid with the Murloc Knight, it's kind of like a preference pick. Right. Yeah. I guess looking at these matchups, Kuno isn't actually facing the Druid, where you know most of our players did actually, in fact, bring a Druid, and that's where really mid-range uh, Paladin shines, right, against the uh, Druid class. But you know, he got the win, so it doesn't matter. We'll see if his uh, Zoo Warlock and his, um, you know, uh, other deck can uh, get him to win. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. Yeah. So here, again, is an important 50-50 that both players have to look at, uh, whether both randomly or both intentionally, is you want to get the good matchup. Hunter wanted to hit into the Zoo Warlock right. and ends up uh, hitting the Druid instead. So this, I would say, is definitely in Kano's favor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if he is able to stop the aggression, he will be able to um, to pull through. And Darius' Aspirant is a, ca a card that actually changes the matchup. Before, it was a bit easier for Hunter, but with Darius's, wow, the hand. Yeah, the hand. Pretty spectacular, considering that it gives you almost every option of ramp early on. Now, there is a chance that Kano might not even use all of that ramp available. Sometimes it's a little too <laughs> slow to... Expect that you can wild growth and use Darnas Sasprit safely. Sometimes you just have to hit the, the gas button yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, now he got rid of the claw, so this is a really great card to get. Like sometimes, even if you get the, all the run cards, uh, you, you will not have the normal minions to play. All right. Well, putting out this uh, pilot shredder because next turn he will either with Darnas Sasprit or wild growth, anyways. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. The only problem is you don't want the Shredder to trade down into things like Juggler. That's where it gets really painful. Elune, guide my lance. Oh, yeah, he might be forced to do it anyway. Yeah. He's getting a minion and he's getting an armor Whoa. smith. Whoa! That's, That's a great card. It's almost one of the best you can ask for. Unless there's a Huffer. Oh! <laughs> well, such is the way of the Hunter life. You it's usually roll Huffer and go for the hero portrait on the other side of the board, but in this case... Whoa. What do you what do you think? Oh, I think you take the free trade off the armorsmith here. The problem is he's, fa he's facing. So there can be a keeper of the grove. So he wants it. He was thinking about uh, killing the darknesses here. Well, I mean, we seen earlier in one of our quarterfinal matches um, just how you know deadly not removing an armorsmith might be. Yeah, it ended up being the exact reason that the warrior is able to stay alive for so long. Mm -hmm. And those armorsmiths against a deck that wants to be so fast like this Hunter deck, that's your bread and butter. You need to have those extra points of damage or else you might lose. 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. <laughs> so many one health creatures against a druid. That druid has a swipe that can be used at some point. There's no swipe for Kuna now. Yeah, definitely. You're always paranoid about the druid's swipe. And that's what, that card is what really defines this matchup sometimes because it can halt all the aggression. Mm -hmm. And druid from that point on can just taunt and heal and even race. Exactly. And up with all these one drops that Diamond is running, it actually makes uh, something like Quick Shot yeah. much, much better. What a draw, though. Be because he is Emperor Thorson here, trading is not as bad with the Darnassus Aspirin right. as it would be because next turn he should have access to every card. Whoa. Yeah, there's one more thing also. The thing is that you are kind of forcing Hunter to trade into your minions. If Hunter just goes face, you have Thorson and it will tick again. So we'll be able to play Ancient of War. And uh, if you decide to draw, I think it's actually might be better to heal here too. Hmm. Ancient of War. It could be. It's one of those scenarios where you're realizing, I'd rather just live than just try to draw into more cards right now. He's still in a good position. Dread of the Quell for four mana, he will be able to use the hero power. He has Taurus and now he can use two trade into minions, and he knows that Diamond has only one card in him. But that one card is a very important card indeed. Al is effectively going to, you know, kill off the Druid of the Claws, uh, you know, in Diamond side, because he just wants to end the game, really. Uh, and the Whirling Blaze is actually pretty nice, too. Yeah, it is. It's plus one, plus one attack, and it allows him to ignore the Druid of the Claw, but on the other hand, there is a lot of damage for Kuno himself. If he picks up something like a Savage Roar, then he can... Race. Yeah, he can race um, primarily because he also has Ancient of Lore to heal him. That'll buy him some really valuable time. But this also means that Kuno has to sort of clear this board. He has no more taunts available, and he only has two minutes available for trading. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Ancient of Lore is definitely an option. You know, put himself to 13 life. He's going to buy him a turn or two. And it feels like a priority is to kill off the, at least the Iron Beak Owl so you can deactivate a potential kill command off the top from your opponent. Yeah, deny the beast. And then Raid is all right because he will be able to use the hero power on top of playing Shredder and Ancient of Lore. But a hard decision indeed. And another question is, how much, how badly do you want to go for a two-turn lethal on your opponent as well? Um, you know, how much are you trading onto the board versus being aggressive so that way you can potentially win the following turn if your opponent doesn't have the right cards? Yeah, that's true. At the end of the day, uh, being more aggressive against an aggro deck is the best answer. Because otherwise, you're just yeah. waiting to die. Sometimes the, be the, the best defense is a better offense, and Drew is one of the best at being able to flip the switch with cards like Savage War, so he sets up 18 damage. There's no beast on the board as well, so Kill Command is gonna deal only 3 damage. Wolf Rider, that's plus 3, so it's uh, 6, 8, 10 points of damage, not enough with the explosive trap. So it seems like Diamond has to trade for something, or else he's just dead on board. Right, he can use the explosive trap to uh, weaken the minions so that if they attack into the hero, uh, all of them will die. Right. I also wonder if there's a second type of trap in Diamond's deck, and I guess we just got confirmation. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. And that's what makes that Whoa. explosive trap Oh, work. that should be enough with the explosive trap. Uh, yes, it certainly will be. So Savage War will give Kuno a much-needed 2-1 victory and put Daimang on elimination point. Yeah, it seems like Kuno braved the storm yet again and uh, escaped the aggro deck's um, aggression one turn earlier. And yeah. that's exactly what you want to see. This is such a great position for Kuno because with this win, he's only left with his uh, Demon Zoo. And Demon Zoo has a great matchup. Um, Versus, versus Shaman, I believe. It's Ben versus, 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 versus Hunter. Yeah, generally speaking, the Druid's been pretty decent against the Face Hunter, considering that it's got early game cards like Dynas Aspirin helping it allow. You saw exactly what happened when Druid could ramp. It can beat almost anything. And once again, showing us how powerful those early mana crystals are. Mm -hmm. Spe specifically with Darnassus uh, Aspirin, just being there as a minion, giving the mana crystal, and being also able to trade, uh, putting uh, Hunter in a position where you have to think about trading, you have to uh, save yourself, and then you can't deal enough damage to, to your opponent to just finish the game. Yeah, definitely. So this leaves Kuno with two chances to take out uh, Dai Meng, the Hunter and the Shaman. Uh, ultimately, I do feel like the Zoo Warlock is very effective against Mech Shaman. Um, there are ways for you to curve really awkwardly that it's not very good, but I do feel like Kuno's a really large advantage at this point. Absolutely. So uh, what is he going to take now? Kuno is taking uh, the, the Warlock, obviously. Uh, as Daiming, do you just take Hunter again because it has a good matchup? Yeah, you definitely want the win first and then worry about the last match, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, Hunter is what you want against Zoo, right? Your Explosive Trap just clears the whole board. Um, and the only way for a Zoo Warlock to really, you know, deal with the threat 
of Hunter just like you know putting damage in uh, so early is to actually develop stuff like Nerubin Ig, and then make a big Void Terror perhaps and just yeah, outrace them like that. Yep. All right, guys. Before we jump into another game, we have uh, one more interview for you. So um, stay with us. Hello 整个街头亮着灯，但是没有一辆车，然后你自己一个人站在这个城市里，你就感觉这个整个城市全是被你左右拥有了。我在我们班的成绩属于属于中等，或者说就是嗯，也也是一个就是呃，shy boy，就是
So early game board control is the name of the game for the zoo player. You have to deny the hunter from being able to start doing very aggressive damage. And then ideally use your board trades to get really powerful minions on the board early. Right, yeah. but unfortunately, both of these one drops do contest the direwolf alpha. So, uh, you know, Kano will have to find something else. This, this uh, Nerubian Ig would have been really good if the wolf stays alive, but uh, it's going to get taken out. I feel like it's okay for now. Uh, so, Hunter is so good versus Zoo because Zoo um, depends on building up the board, and Hunter has unleashed the Hounds and Explosive Chop that can deal with it really mm -hmm. easily. From the Zoo perspective, you want to have cards like Nerubian Egg and maybe get the Voiter, uh, Void Caller, and lock the game with the Malganis as well. So, you want to have those big creatures. The fact that he has the drops for now and is able to contain the aggression uh, is, really, is really good for him. <laughs> Okay, well, Daimeng opts to go off curve to try to be a little bit more aggressive with the Glaive Zuka and the South Sea Deckhand. He really cross his fingers that his opponent doesn't have an easy way to activate this egg. Right. Oh, there's wow. a Oh, started. my goodness. That, that is a potential surgeon. board clear. Yeah, because it does activate the Neck Jiggle two times. Another oh, time no. it's come off of the Nerubian egg. That's one minion. Uh, he needs one more. Oh! oh. That dagger landed not only on the minion, but inside of Dimex's heart. That yep. hurt a lot. Oh, and the Leoc is not going to push any more damage and also does not trade with the Nerubian. Yeah. So it um, seems like ties have turned. And there is Implosion as well. Certainly. That Implosion oh. is also just as big, knowing that his opponent probably doesn't have an easy answer to this outside of Unleash the Hounds. I've mentioned cards like Unleash the Hounds and uh, Explosive Chop, but if you don't draw into them, how do you even stop Warlock? That's right. I mean, traditionally, again, this is supposed to be a matchup that gives the Warlock player a hard time. But you're not, you don't really feel like you're in a position to be able to press for the win. Diamond has to swing with four turns on wow. this Eagle Horn Oh, wow. Power of Illuming will be very important to push with the damage, but Diamond recognizes that he can't trade with his minions. He needs to go for face and deal as much damage as possible. Eagle Horn Bow is uh, overall, both bows, it's like six damage, but it's, uh, it's even 12 damage, but over the course of four turns. Wow, he refuses to take any more damage, not even willing to life tap at 18 health. He's going to be determined to finish the game, and he said, you know what, I'm going to need every single uh, point of life at this stage. Yeah, I mean, he already has the hand to win the game. He plays Dr. Groom next turn, and then the following turn, Powerful Woman should do the trick along with Dr. Groom dealing 7 damage at least. Oh, something like Doomguard is going to finish the game on the spot. Oh, not quite, though. That's right, he has 11 damage. Doesn't well, have any more ways to juggle. If he was able to tap into that juggler, for example, right, that would have potentially been lethal. But if, if he does play the Dr. Broom here, Diamond will have six hounds off the Unleash the Hounds. Would that be enough damage yes. if he draws something like a kill oh, command? 14 with the kill commands. Mm. So it's pretty tricky right now. For Even Kuno. with the quick shot, I think that would be enough. So six minions, nine damage, 11 with the hero power. Yeah, right. I mean, it would right. be. Because it allows him to squeeze in the hero power, like you said. So Kano in a very awkward situation. He's going to play the knife juggler instead mm. of Dr. Boo because he wants to play around that leash the hounds. Well, this means that uh, four hounds, seven. That one is... I'm not going to do It's not that. good enough. Yeah, it's not good enough. And Because he can't hero power as well. Right. He can't really clear. I mean, he can clear, but then if you spend damage here on clearing, can he win? Well, he needs to at least not die to what's on board. And if he also spends his weapon charge, uh, he's, he doesn't, he's gonna be able to get closer, but still not enough not to kill his opponent. Well, Shredder is okay. It doesn't finish the game yet. Hmm. Now Kuno knows that Unleash the Hounds is out of the way. So there's yeah. five damage incoming. He knows that five needs to be dealt. Whoa. Okay, right. so I think he's going to go to a scenario where, like, you know, maybe if these boom bots or whatnot kill, maybe that would be the way to decide it. We need a quick shot off the top here. Quick shot into kill commands. That explosive trap. No. no. Not it. And that explosive trap will be certain death for Dai Meng. There's no way for him to be able to get out of this situation. Unless there's like some weird blob of like misdirection or something, but I, I don't really think so. Kano has every single tool at his disposal to advance the semifinals here. Absolutely. So now he just needs to attack. He even gets the Doom Guard mm -hmm. seal the deal, but the bomb is going to phase. Explosive chop is going to trigger. At all those bombs, 100% kill wow. for damage to phase. And That's Kuno right. is advancing to the semifinal. We have our third semifinalist hailing from Japan as Southeast Asia gets. 
into the semifinals, denying China of their first birth in 2015. What an amazing match. We were thinking that aggression is going to prevail, that Diming is going to win with all those decks he brought, but it's Kuno with the mid-range Paladin, Druid, and Zoo. Yeah, the consistency that some of these mid-range decks have um, while still retaining a lot of their explosive potential as the game goes on, is still a very powerful ally to have in your lineup. And I think Kuno really understands this mid-range style of lineup. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to see more games from Kuno um, tomorrow uh, when we advance to the second day. Amas, any thoughts about this, uh, this match specifically? Yeah, Kuno just played his uh, game really well. His mechanics were on point. He spotted a very good lethal. And a congratulations goes to him. He spotted the only lethal in that situation. We spotted yeah. two other ways he couldn't lethal. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's ultimately why he's playing. And he's gotten so far. Job well done to this Japanese player. Uh, what was your favorite play from the match? Uh, well, obviously the one that made us look the worst <laughs> and look, you know, like a genius. Uh, or a person that probably can basically count from uh, to 17. So. That was probably my favorite. Same. Same? Yep. Same play? Yep. All right, guys. We have Rachel down on stage with the winner. Thanks so much, guys. I'm here with Kuno, and I want to know, did this victory have any special importance to you? Um, kind of, because this is the first match of the BlizzCon stage, so I didn't want to show my scare to, to the audience. Yeah, that, that's why. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, I'm taking it by that applause, and feel free, guys, because that was quite a show of skill. Kuno, this is one of your first, if not the first, major tournament that you've been a part of. Japan recently just got their own server. I mean, you're sort of the underdog here. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, maybe you is better than me, but yeah, as a region, it's not that good as me, yeah, I guess. Do you think you're going to go all the way? Yeah, what? Are you going to win? Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Well, thank you so much, Kuno. One more round of applause for him. And up next, we have our final Hearthstone World Championship map of the day. We have the quarterfinal between Zoro and Hotform. For now, let's take a look at our match highlights brought to you by Windows 10 DVR Replay.